Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to texture this leather bag inside Substance Painter and at the end render it in Marmoso tool bag. So for the first step, I need to check UVW map coordinate. And for that, I'm going to use unwrap UVW map modifier in 3ds Max. So you can search it in modifier list, unwrap, okay. And after that, I'm going to open UV editor. So this is the first stage and first step. So here, what we have, uh, these are the clusters, UV clusters for this model, and they are packed together in zero to one coordinate. And this is good. I'm okay with that. I'm going to check Pixel density over there, yeah, it's good. It's the same all over the model. So we are good in this phase. And let's go and convert to editable poly. Okay, but for this model, I'm going to use different technique for the zip line. For, but because, uh, you know, it's open zip line over there and I can use simpler uh, technique for this. So I need to detach the zip line from the main model for the first action. And after that, I'm going to apply a different material for the zip line. Okay. So let's go and check this. Yeah. This is my zip line texture so you can create this in substance painter designer or photoshop what software that you want you can use any software to create this simple zip line texture so let's go and give this texture to the material you can see this is my texture and this is the material okay so everything is fit here let's go and check yeah everything is good everything is fit and what is the process to reach this result okay so let's go and check unwrap open uv editor and as you can see this is the huge cluster uv okay but what is the logic what is the logic behind this technique? Okay, I'm going to load the texture from here. And as you can see, I have the fixed position for each cluster on the texture. And there is no UV seams in the model. So this is the straight UV cluster, top of the this texture because it's going to be tile. And as you can see, it's going to continue for infinity. So this is the result from this technique. And I can move the cluster, you can see here, and check the position. Yeah, it's okay or it's not. And this is the important thing. Uh, we are we are using a different technique outside the substance painter. And the most important thing here is all the cluster should have the same size or same scale. And it shouldn't be like this. You know, bigger cluster or smaller cluster. They should have the same size. So let's convert it to a digital poly. And here I have my zip line material. It's okay, it's fixed, and I'm okay with that. But for the main leather, we are going to create texture in Substance Painter. So I need to export two different meshes 
version for this purpose. One for Marmoset toolbag, the bag and the zip line together, and one for the Substance Painter, just the bag, not zip line. So this is the main uh, tips here. So I'm going to export the bag itself. Export selected. Yeah, over here for Substance, so I can recognize what model should use for what purpose. So just a smoothing group is okay for me and okay. And this is the first version of the export model. And I'm going to select two object, the zip line and the bag. Okay, file, export, export selected. In the same path, for Marmos. Okay, so it's done. But uh, I need different thing here. Uh, in my mind, I'm going to put the bag top of the box, stone box in Marmos tool bag. So for the rendering stage. So let me create this and put it in zero, zero. Okay. Let's select this model and bring it up. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, I'm going to create this type of studio and this is the stone stage that this bag should be on top of it. So let's go and give the chamfer modifier to this box and bring it down the amount value, for example. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. And Keep the turbo smooth to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's okay. So, smooth modifier, auto smooth, or maybe weighted normal. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's better now. Okay, convert it to editable poly. Check the UVW unwrap and Yeah, yeah, everything is okay. So I can select all the cluster and press relax and pack together. Yeah, convert it to editable poly and it's done. Okay, uh, let me give the name stone stage. Yeah, and export it. Stone stage and it's okay so we are good to go and for the next part we are going to substance painter and start our texturing process now we are in substance painter so uh, for the starting the process we are going to file new and here I'm going to choose Unreal Engine 4 template and in file click select and select the file that we export from 3ds max for substance painter so for substance painter fx i'm going to select that open directx is okay 2k document resolution is okay and for import setting i'm going to turn off auto unwrap and import cameras and we don't have uh, UDIMs, so I'm going to check use UV tile workflow is off and okay, press okay. So yeah, 
everything is okay here so let's go and start the process the most important thing in substance painter is uh, we need mesh maps okay let's go and check we need uh, mesh maps and for that we need to bake mesh maps and whenever you click over bake mesh maps or going to bake uh, mode we are here and output size the size that you want i'm going to choose 8k and i need bent normals and anti lazing on super sampling 64x so this is the setting and let's go and bake the selected texture okay now the baking process is down and we have all the mesh maps that we need in the texturing process so for the first step let's go and create some folder for categories uh, the first one is leather the second one is steel part and bottom and border okay let's go and create the mask for each section for example for leather i'm going to add black mask paint hold alt and click on the mask and now we are in the mask mode press 4 to changing the mode to the polygon fill and use this mode for yeah creating the mask okay and it's done so let's go and create the mask for the seal part for the seal part i can just put the mask on the zip element yeah don't have any steel part on the model and for the bottom black mask add the paint and here yeah hold alt and go to the mask view yeah like this and uh, we don't have any button over there so you're good and for the border let's go and add paint hold alt and i can do something else yeah like this and press x to reverse the selection and then now i can just remove the big item and yeah let's check yeah so the border part is done also okay so let's add some material to the model for the border i'm going to use latex black yeah in the smart material yeah so in the border let's change it to for example red and i'm going down to the structure select the base and change the color for example i i need the light brown something like this yeah or maybe a little bit what desaturate this bra yeah yeah it's okay it's okay for now so for the steel as always i'm going to use steel dark edge 
the best steel material in Substance Painter. Yeah. So now we are good here. And for the button, I'm going to use jade material. Yeah. And change the color to, for example, something like light, very light brown. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's okay. So we are down in this three category. Let's go and change the color to red. And I'm going to add a paint layer call it sharpen and give the filter sharpen filter and put it on for example 0.5 and change the blending mode to pass through and apply to all channel okay so I need to check each material to don't have sharpen layer because it's going to duplicate the sharpen effect so yeah it's okay in jade and in the steel yeah we don't have it so let's go and create the leather part for leather section I'm coming here in my library and type leather in the smart material category and choose between all the leather material that I have here uh, for example this one yeah this is good but I need to change some uh, parameters under the hood okay let's test another one now it's not good for this and let's check this okay Wait for loading. No, these are not good. Not good for that. Okay, so this is the version that I want. I'm going to put it on the leather category. Okay, so let's go and change the parameter. I'm going to turn up all the layers and close the library window and let's change the color to something like this yeah yeah it's okay it's okay because it's uh, it's uh, the first layer so i need to turn on all the channel data and leather big grain yeah it's good and i'm going to increase the tiling amount for example 10 I think 10 is good. Yeah, 10 is good. Maybe 9. 9 is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so much better. So uh, the color variation layer 1. Yeah, let's check the mask. Okay, so it's not logical to have this effect and I need to remove that because it's related to mesh maps. So I'm going to add the paint layer, put it on subtrack and go to mask mode, press F3. And here I need to remove these lines. Okay, so going back to paint mode and remove these lines it's helped me to have more realistic result okay so just remove the lines that created by mesh maps 
and I'm in occlusion. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think it's it's good. Yeah, we are good here. And color variation two. Yeah, it's good enough. Mm. And color variation three. Yeah, maybe it's too much. Too much for this material. I'm going to decrease the amount of the opacity of the layer. And yeah, maybe make the color brighter. Something like this. Yeah, it's better. Color variation four. And I'm going to create copy of that paint over this. Yeah, maybe decrease the opacity of the paint layer. Yeah, it's better. So, uh, edge worn. Yeah, it's not bad, but let me try another thing. For example, brighter color like this and decrease the opacity to avoid strong effect on the color. So let's turn off the layers and bring the layers back to visible yeah that's good yeah maybe it's too much coloration too i'm going to yeah this is better yeah and this one yeah it's okay and this one yeah yeah, it's better. And edge worn. Mm. Maybe decrease the roughness value to something like four. And change the color. Yeah, the color is too rich. It's okay. The roughness, yeah, yeah it's good. It's good to okay let's change the quality to medium and in display setting I'm going to change environment map to studio tomoko and change the focal length to something like 60 yeah it's better to see what happened here Okay, uh, let's change the color to something like maybe yeah, a little more, a little bit reddish tint on it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's better. Okay, uh, I can come back and change the color anytime. So this is the leather part, the first part. And let's go and create a fill layer. Call it color change and, and give it black mask. Add generator on black mask and here 3d linear gradient okay it's top down and I need to invert it so uh, put the 
blending mode to soft light. Come here and put it on a color, just color. And make it a little bit dark like this. Yeah, I think it's better. And you can come over here, and change the balance. For example, something like this. Yeah. Okay, we are good here and I have what I want in the color section, as you can see over here. And for this part, and this part, and I need to apply some stitches pattern. So let's use some stitches pattern from our product. Uh, for example, 22 is good. Uh, something like 23. Let's bring the stitches here. 22 and 29, maybe 34. Yeah, th these are good for this purpose. So let's create a subfolder, stitches pattern, and put all the layers under the stitches pattern folder. I'm going to add black mask. Add paint and let's use UV chunk fill and press this and this part. Okay, and let's back and check what we have here. Let's bring the tiling to something like four, for example and rotated 90 degree yeah the four is, is too high the value is too high and maybe three is good yeah i think three is good for this pattern and let's go for another three mm, yeah it's good four i think it's too small and then we stick with three Let's go and give it 90 degree rotation. Yeah. And another one. Three. 90. And this one. Something like four. 90. Maybe. Three is good. Yeah, three is better. So uh, we have this type of pattern, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, these are not good, not not good enough. For this pattern, we have so many parameters here. Uh, for example, I need to choose right normal format for the layer and that is direct x so you can see the layer and the visual is correct right now and i can decrease the normal intensity for example something like 1.5 it's good and for the height you can remove all the height data and play with the normal intensity something like for example 10 and it's not recommended well, for playing with these parameters uh, you need to have normal and the height at the same time and uh, for avoiding this effect strong effect on the height channel you can play with the height range for example bring it down something like 25 Point twenty-five. Yeah, I think it's it's okay. Maybe maybe it's need more something like point four. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's better now. And for the roughness, we are good. Yeah, roughness is good. And stitch, stitches roughness, I need to have white stitches roughness here. Yeah, something like this and roughness color. Okay. And for the color, color section, I have two different parameter, stitches color. I can play with the stitches color and the color itself for the pattern. But I have the leather material under that and I just need to apply the pattern over the leather, okay? So I can go here and turn off the color. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay but it's not good because the stitches color gone so what we have here a pattern i need stitches color on it but i don't need the color of the pattern so i'm going here and decrease the alpha from the color and at the end i have the stitches color the white and the color from the layer look it's the same yeah and uh, i recommend it to you whenever you are using something like this you need to go over here texture set setting and in the channel you should add ambient occlusion channel yeah yeah it's better now Okay, so we have our stitches. Yeah, we have the color transform from dark to light. Yeah, everything is good. Everything is good here. And let's go at some logo, right? And for the leather part, I'm going to create a logo the first and second logo layer because I want to add a logo here and a logo over there okay black mask black mask for the first logo I want to change the color to something like gold maybe a little bit minus height value yeah and for the roughness maybe i am going to decrease so i need the reflective logo and for the metallic uh, let's and um, play with the 0.5 okay so um logo one press add fill and in the library i'm going to search for font and for the font oh why yeah font i'm going to here and choose this one okay press F3 to go back to 2D view and in the properties field UV wrap it should be unknown so I can play with the font itself and this font should be here okay change the size and we are good and let's type something here for example Christian Dior and put it on bold and play with the size oh Dior is small why why Dior 
Christian Dior. Press F1 to check. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's it's good. It's between the arc. Yeah, and everything is good. So, and I want to add a fill layer top of the font and use mm, something like wave. Yeah, wave two. Yeah, and tiling should be on. 30 or maybe 32 yeah it's a good effect and let's change the blending mode to multiply yeah and it's done it's done and play with the histogram position to reach the effect that I want uh, I need change the contrast and yeah it's okay but uh, there is a problem that this layer can take height or normal information from the previous layer so I need to change something and check yeah I have normal and height but it shouldn't give uh, the normal information or it shouldn't take the normal information or height information from previous layer so I need to change all the channels to normal in the blending mode so this is normal I'm going to apply the channel and it's done yeah you can see uh, whenever I turn off the wave you can see what we have here a pure data so let's bring down mm, yeah something like this and maybe four to five yeah whenever i increase the resolution size uh, it's it's going to be okay so the first logo is done but i need to add some information ao information top of that so i need to go over here and AO plus and hold alt click on AO and bring down the ambient occlusion value so uh, let's add the anchor point here I'm going to add black mask and fill layer and a filter okay in a fill layer i'm going to load these anchor point data logo one so what's happening in the mask yeah it's going to read all the data that i have under the anchor point okay so uh, alpha behavior extract alpha it's not okay keep alpha it's okay you need to change this parameter it depends on your alpha so change it whenever you don't have the result that you want and in the filter i'm going to use blur filter okay and hold alt and click and drag the fill layer that contain anchor point data and put the blending mode to subtract so what's happened here it's going to subtract itself from itself okay so i uh, whenever i turn off the blur it's nothing to show there is nothing to show for us okay but uh whenever i turn the blur you can see the effect outer line so i think it's okay yeah this is with ao and this is without ao so 
let's go and create another logo here I can bring the layer from logo 1 to logo 2 and just hold the deer not the Christian yeah like this and set the position yeah it's okay duplicate the layer and yeah as you can see it's going to cover the other one so I need to change the blending mode to linear dodge add so it's going to be fixed okay but it's mirror so I need to change the rotation and reposition that yeah yeah it's okay and for this I'm going to put the color data to soft, la soft light and increase the white value and put the height to something like minus 0.08 yeah something like this or maybe it's too strong I try this yeah and decrease the opacity of the color data yeah I'm okay with that and for AO plus layer I need to add this data to AO plus layer okay but it's too hard to have so many anchor points under one layer and what I'm going to do it's going to add another anchor point and create another layer which is called um, mask plus okay turn off all the layer and create a black mask create two fill layer first one is going to load logo one mask and the second one is going to load logo two mask okay and if i'm going to mask mode i need to change this blending mode to linear dodge and, and i have all the mask data that I need so I add anchor point and here instead of logo one mask I'm going to load mask plus and in the field layer the second field layer so I have AO effect on all data so as you can see we are here in a good position so i need to add a stitches on the model for the final tweak and action so let's go and add a paint layer call it the stitches and in the library I'm going to search stitch oh come on stitch and under the brush I'm going to use stitches straight okay so there is some parameter that we need to change before do anything for example for alignments I'm going to use UV for size of space I'm going to use texture and uh, here in advanced parameters uh, I can change the stitches size length for longer and width for narrower 
size of the stitch. And as you can see, oh, let's go and test it here. As you can see, I have my stitches. So let's bring the size to something like 0.5. I think it's good value yeah and turn on lazy mouse option and bring down the distance for example something to one or lower maybe 0.5 because all the UV cluster here they are straight so I can uh, use shift option or straight stroke option in soft sense painter okay and for the first one let's go and add stitches on this part for this part let's press tab to have maximum view i'm going to use stitches brush like this yeah and let's go back and see what happened yeah everything is good everything is fine but I need to turn on height information on the brush okay so control Z to remove everything that we done and the base color for the stitch maybe maybe white maybe white is better and yeah press c on the keyboard to go back to base color mode and here i can use this option you can use shift for stroke and control for a straight stroke okay so yeah it's good and for this part yeah yeah let's go and see what happened yeah everything is good i think we are in a good position yeah let's go and add stitches all over the back okay for example here i'm going to add stitches yes like this and oh come on saving in the middle of the action it's not good yeah it's gone okay yeah put the stitches over everywhere yeah And almost we are done. We do with these two pieces. Okay. Maybe a little bit higher.
Okay. And let's go back and check. Yeah, every size of the stitches is good and it's the same. And I just need to add the stitches to these parts and these parts. Okay, so let's go and add stitches. Yeah, the dior part. Okay, and let's bring razor to erase this section. You can change alignment and size space to UV and texture. So let's bring some curve stitches. To this part with careful stroke arm. It's too hard to use this option in the curve mode. Yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's accept acceptable. Yeah, and. maybe a little to the left yeah bring a razor to erase this section Yeah, it's good. And we are here for the these handles. Okay. The size it's the same. It's the same all over the back. So it's important thing that we need to have the same size. So Over here, okay. Oh, it's not good. and yeah I think it's done let's go back and check yeah everything is good but I need the stitches for the inside part yeah we have it we have it right now yeah it's awesome it's awesome yeah so uh, let's change the layers to height and play with this slider to reach the good amount of the height for the stitches yeah and for the color I can play with the for example soft light yeah maybe it's good or maybe i need to change to normal and play with the opacity 
something like this and exactly with the stitches pattern with the opacity or maybe play with the stitches color alpha from the layer instead of the opacity from the blending mode okay let's bring down yeah i think it's okay yeah i think it's okay and let's add some another final tweak for example i need to roughness value modification and okay uh, let's go and add fill layer and for the fill layer i'm going to use moisture for the roughness yeah and put it to three for example maybe play with the balance or pattern size rotation oh, what happened Yeah, one and two is good. It's random, but it's good. And I can play with the scale. I'm back here. And um, yeah, maybe 55 is good enough. We can check and test in Marmoset in our studio. And after that, you can come back and change everything. Some something like color, logo, and everything. I mean, okay. Uh, but I'm I'm not satisfied with this. So let's go back to stitches. And here. erase I'm going to erase everything here maybe paint paint it again yeah and for example starting with with the cable oh, it's too big it's too big the size should be on 0.5 and yeah it's better better than the previous one and press yeah yeah it's better and yeah, we are good. We are good. So, at the first, I'm going to paint the curve section. Maybe something like this. Oh, it's too yeah let's go and check mm. is it better or not I think it's it's better compared than this one so 
yeah I think I need to remove this one again and paint it again so we need to keep the distance from the edge oh it's it's going wrong yeah no it's Yeah, it's better. It's better. So, yeah. And for the end of the tweak, I'm going to add edge bump layer. So let's go and add black mask, add generator, and edge. Yeah, metal edge. And here I need to decrease grunge amount and play with the ver level. Yeah. And here I can see what what I have. Soft light. Make lighter effect on the edge bring up the height value like this and roughness down so okay and I just need to add some for example wrinkles so I'm going to add wrinkles and add black mask generator and inflate inflate and shrink wrap okay and just have wrinkle density to something like 200 as you can see this is the effect yeah everything is good and maybe tightness to 0.5 and increase these parameters to see what happened. As you read, increase it to 250. Yeah, and in the layer, I'm going to turn off all the layers except height and give a little height information. No, it's too strong, but something like 0.50 is, I think it's good. Yeah, you can see the effect over here. Maybe 0.1, it's enough. And we are good to go. Yeah. And for the last tweak, I have a color code for the base color let's paste over here and see what we have yeah I think it's good and the color change maybe bring down the opacity yeah yeah it's done it's done so I need to export all the textures for marmoset 
and I'm going to file export texture and I need to set a path over here Unreal Engine 4 packed 16 bits and TIFF version on an 8K size and for the texture set output maps I don't need emissive just color metallic roughness ambient occlusion and the normal so let's go and export the textures and now we are in the final stage for rendering I need to set up studio and set up material in Marmosa toolback so I'm going here in the scene right click and import model and at the first I'm going to load stone stage okay so this is my stone stage and after that import model for marmoset fx so let's bring up the model yeah we are we are good here we are good here and let's check everything is fit here or not yeah i think it's good okay so i need to come here in the render section and turn on use ray tracing and advanced light sampling and put the bounces to four and we are okay in the lighting section in the output i need to uh, set aspect ratio to something like 50 double zero and 20 double zero okay so let's create camera and we are in camera one and turn on save frame so i can put camera here like this and for lens setting maybe 75 millimeter lens is good enough for our purpose yeah and let's set the frame yeah something like this okay in camera one I'm going to change in the post effect to mapping to aces, curves to high contrast, yeah, and highlight value to minus 0.1. And for the midtown and shadows, something like, yeah, maybe 0.1. And for the clarity, maybe 0.6, it's enough. For the sharpen, strength should be on one because I need sharp render. And bloom, yeah, I know maybe we should tweak some settings after lighting and setting up the material. So, vignette soften yeah it's good and let's go back to the sky backdrop mode change to color and maybe choose color something like this okay so for the stone stage i'm going to window library material uh, stone and use marble white yeah it's okay but as you can see the reflect on a material it's not enough and it's not good so I need to add shadow catcher and bring up the shadow catcher over here yeah and turn on indirect shadow 
and maybe play with the specular and roughness yeah the the, uh, the reflect is so good but we need to scale down and yeah okay and for the zip line i have my textures so let's load the normal yeah the normal and came here and we need to change the flip normal or flip y and for the albedo we have this zipper jpeg okay so you can change the color to anything that you want for example something like this or maybe maybe some cool dish tint and play with the roughness and the metalness for the metalness you can copy the textures over here and play with the value so we are good and you can see the we have we have a bug here so I'm going to select the model and turn off the callback faces so it's going to be fixed immediately so let's go and bring the material to this back press normal load normal map and press flip y because we know we use direct x and in albedo load this and in a roughness map yeah but we need to change the channel to g copy these textures and paste here change the channel to b occlusion paste and it should be on the red red channel so we are done here and let's go and fix the lighting here so and for now i'm going to turn off the shadow catcher because it's going to uh, give us this yellow tint on the stone so for the sky i'm going to use an interior mm, something like this one maybe and bring up the value yeah play with the rotation to achieve the result that i want yeah maybe it's good here okay and let's go and add some light here so the first light should give me some highlight over there okay so for example seven and or six point nine with a rectangle shape big size and i'm going to change okay let's set all the rotation information to zero and play with the yeah it should be white white color and let's change the camera yeah 
I think it's good. And the second one should be here in the back. So let's change the rotation. Yeah, like this. But maybe use temperature to have a warmish color. Yeah, it's okay. And for the third one, I need to add some highlight to this part. So let's go and rotate. Yeah. Something like this, and decrease the value. Yeah. And for the fourth, I need the top light. Let's go and bring some top light. Yeah, something like this. but it should be more like this yeah yeah it, yeah it's it's okay it's okay so let's bring back all the lights yeah mhm mm this one and the light okay so we have some burning here I can decrease the whiteness of the stone so I can fix the problem with this trick. Yeah. And bring back Shadow Catcher. Yeah. Maybe, maybe decrease the opacity. Roughness. I'm okay with that. And let's check something else. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. I think it's too strong for this scene. And this one. And at the end. Maybe we can decrease the sky brightness. Yeah, or maybe we can play with the highlight value from here. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's better. And for the shadow catcher, you can use black or maybe white and change the color in Photoshop or any software that you want. So let's just give some color to background yeah like this so we are done yeah it's finished and for the second camera i'm going to duplicate and going to camera two and come here yeah and turn on the depth of field mode to ray traced press middle button to choose the focus point and play with the slider over here and this is good this is good so in the camera i can increase the exposure like this and camera one I can increase the exposure again to something like this or maybe this yeah okay let's go back to substance painter go to the roughness the roughness is good but I need to play 
with the roughness a little bit more. So I'm going to copy the roughness value and change the moisture to fingerprint. Yeah. And tiling should be on five. And yeah, this is the effect that I want. You can see. Okay, let's export again and see what the what is the result. And now you can see the effect on a roughness. So we're going to render, put the sample number to something like six hundred. And yeah, the noise is trying to one and increase the resolution and add camera to render cameras, as you can see, and press render image, and it's done. Okay, this is end of the video. I hope you learned something new in this video. Like the video if you like it. Share your mind in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe the channel. See you guys.